Welcome to the instructional video for Dungeons & Dragons Adventure Begins, a cooperative fantasy board game. Let's get started. Welcome to the city of Neverwinter. In Adventure Begins, your party of heroes will choose to battle and defeat one of four terrible boss monsters who are threatening the land. Your options are the Kraken, the Beholder, Felbris, the Fire Giant, Orn, or the Green Dragon, Death Sleep. For this tutorial, we'll use Death Sleep as our chosen boss. First, find the dungeon board that matches the icon on the front of your chosen boss monster. Death Sleep lives in Neverwinter Wood, so that's the board he'll sit on. Next, connect the other three dungeon boards in random order. Each boss has three gatekeeper cards that act as obstacles at certain points in your journey. Find the gatekeeper cards that are associated with your boss. Place the cards in numerical order with illustration face up. On the table next to the gatekeeper spaces of each board, Adventure Begins features four heroes you can choose from. An elf bard, a dwarf fighter, a dragonborn rogue, or a human sorcerer. Each hero has five color matched tiles. Take all of your chosen hero's tiles, their minifigure, hero die, a health tracker, and reference card. First, choose what your hero looks like. Next, choose a personality you like. Every character has four to choose from. The top half of this tile describes the personality you choose. The bottom half describes the special ability you get. These abilities are an extra power you can use during combat to gain an advantage, or to help out a friend. You can only use your ability once per dungeon board, so choose wisely. Finally, choose one of your two combat tiles. These are the attacks you can use when fighting monsters. For more information about the different kinds of attacks, see the instruction booklet. Remember to begin on level 1 of your combat tile. Later in the game, you'll have a chance to use gold to level up your character. When you do, you'll flip your combat tile over to level 2 and your attacks will be more powerful. Once you've chosen all your tiles, slot them into the health tracker and set your HP to 10. The last thing to do is choose a backpack. Backpacks are filled with equipment that'll help you solve problems while you play. Each hero should only take one. Look for the backpack icon to know when to use it. Okay, your path stretches before you. Your heroes are fully equipped and your minifigures are ready to go on the first space. It's time for the adventure to begin. Each board has a deck of adventure cards that go with it. For this example, the first board is Mount Hotnow. So you would load the Mount Hotnow adventure cards into the deck holder. Put the damage tracker and 10-sided Dungeon Master die into the well on top, too. On every turn, including Gatekeeper spaces, the DM draws an adventure card and reads it to the group. Let's back up. What's a DM? In Dungeons & Dragons, one person acts as the Dungeon Master, who is the storyteller, guiding players through the game. But in Adventure Begins, everyone gets a chance to be the DM by taking turns reading the cards and rolling the DM die when the card calls for it or when the group is battling a monster. For now, all you need to know is that the oldest player is the first DM, so they draw the first adventure card of the game. After that, pass the deck holder clockwise to keep track of who is the DM that turn. Okay, back to gameplay. There are two types of adventure cards, scenarios and monsters. Let's talk about scenarios first. Most cards are broken into three sections. The top is the story, and it sets the scene for where your party is, and what challenge might be facing you. The DM always reads this aloud to the group. Next is the call to action. What decision does your group need to make? What situation do you need to resolve? The DM reads this out loud, and then the group acts based on the card's instructions. These actions can be things like making a choice, coming up with a plan, or rolling your dice. The last section is the outcome, or how the card will affect the players. The DM does not read this, 
or execute its instructions until the group has completed the call to action for that card. DMs participate in every card unless stated otherwise. Whenever a card calls for the DM to roll, they should use the 10-sided DM die. As a side note, adventure cards should be placed in the deck holder like this, so the group can see the artwork, but only the DM can read the card. Let's take a closer look at the boards. Every hero moves forward every turn. You can choose to move to the next core space or to a monster space. Any players who move to a monster space will fight a monster there and then rejoin their party on the next core space. We'll cover combat in a couple minutes. At the beginning of a turn, the DM draws the top adventure card from the deck holder. If it's a monster space, they locate whatever the next monster card is and draw that. When players are on a gatekeeper space, the DM picks up the card beside that space and reads it aloud. After you've completed the gatekeeper card at the end of a board, all players move to the first space on the next board and the DM swaps in the new adventure deck. Monster attacks can happen at any time, but you always battle them the same way. First, prepare for combat. The DM uses the damage tracker to set the monster to full health. All players engaging in combat, including the DM if they are on the same space, must roll their 20-sided dice to see who goes first. Every hero has several attacks they can use in combat. Basic attacks like weapons, spells, and moves. Creative attacks that let you describe how you want to fight the monster, and a special skill that can only be used once per dungeon board. Every time a hero attacks a monster, they must first declare out loud which attack they plan to use, then roll their 20-sided die. If you rolled the number listed for your chosen attack or higher, you've succeeded. Some attacks have different outcomes for a range of dice rolls. Follow your attack's specific instructions. If an attack is successful, the DM tracks how much damage it inflicted on the monster. Whenever a hero attacks a monster, it immediately attacks them back. The DM, when rolling as the monster and not their hero, uses the 10-sided DM die. Monsters also have multiple attacks, but they do not have to declare them before rolling. The DM's die roll determines what attack the monster will use and how much damage the attack causes. When players take damage, they move their health trackers down according to the monster's attack. For more information about losing and regaining health, check out the instruction booklet. After the first hero has attacked and been attacked by the monster, combat passes clockwise to the next hero, and they continue until the monster is defeated. All players involved in combat receive a reward, and whichever player reduced the monster's HP to zero gets to describe their kill. The more wildly outlandish, the better. Throughout the game, you'll get items by purchasing them, or as loot when you beat a monster. See the instruction booklet for more info about that. Items are used in combat. There are just a few things to keep in mind. They do cool things like give you extra health, or do extra damage to a monster, or shield you from damage when you're attacked. But you can only use them one at a time. You must successfully attack a monster before you can add an item card. Unless it's a shield. You can use shields to defend against any monster attack. Once you've used an item card, flip it over until you've reached the next board. It's tired, and it needs to rest up for the next fight. Alright heroes, once you've completed all the dungeon boards, defeated all the gatekeepers, and made it to the end of the last board, it's time to fight the boss. First, clip the damage tracker on the boss monster at full health. Whoever the DM is for this turn will play as both the boss and their hero. Combat works exactly the same way as with regular monsters, but now it's way, way harder. When the boss reaches zero health, the hero who dealt the final blow describes their kill. And then, the DM reads the winning story on the back of the boss monster. You've won the day, and saved the realm. For the complete rules, please see the instruction booklet included with the game. Best of luck on your adventures.